What's going on guys, Kevin Mendoza here, back at it yet again with another tutorial, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I built that holographic screen effect, but this is not going to be your typical tutorial where I show you exactly what my mouse does, what I click on, what I drag into the timeline, but instead I really want to share my thought process on how I made this effect as believable as possible. So without wasting any more time, let's just throw on these glasses so I could see what I'm doing and let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. So this is what my timeline looks like. It's nothing too crazy. It's what? Four tracks of video, two tracks of audio, um, so we have some sound effects, some music, um, the main footage, and then some text to animate the, uh, the texting. So the biggest thing that sells this effect is going to be object tracking. And what we're tracking in our fusion clip right here, and let's go to the fusion page right now, to show you what's going on. Uh, that didn't work. What'd I do? Oh, we just have to click on one clip. There we go, okay. So what we're tracking is the holographic screen, and this is just a recorded clip using OBS. Uh, I just took a screen recording of my, my screen, <laughs> um, and then I just put it on top of this footage, which is me doing some incredible acting in my apartment. So for reference, I could probably label these let's label this me and let's label this one screen whoops grab just so you know what we're doing okay so this clip here is going to be what you see here and then the screen grab is going to be the holographic monitor now super quick all i did was i took a tracker node to track a point within this footage of me and I used the uh, this white part of my phone as the reference point to track and then it did its magic, it tracked and then I used the information from the tracker to attach it to the holographic screen and then I just positioned the holographic screen, I cropped it, I sized it down so that way it just looks like it's sitting in front of me and I use all of these nodes to make that happen. And then it renders out to get this final image where the holographic screen is in front of me and it is moving with my phone. So this tracking of the holographic screen to the phone is what sells the effect so well because anyone could just, you know, overlay a video on top of another video and then reduce the opacity and then, you know, that would be it. That's one way to do it, but I like to have it track the movements of my phone or my hand just so it looks like it's actually attached to one another. It just makes it more believable that, hey, this is in real space and it's coming from the phone, even if it is just the small movements like the jitters of my hand or the very, very small movements of the phone, like that makes it sell a lot better. Now to animate it so that way when it pops out of my phone, when I swipe it, I just keyframed it to, I keyframed it here in the inspector uh, to zoom in and zoom out. You're probably not going to see it because it's not on this clip. It's on the clip within this clip. See, this is why I didn't want to do this tutorial because there's so many layers to this. Um, but yeah, just know that I keyframed it to expand and I keyframed the position also of like, you know, where it was within frame. So it started like closer to the phone and then it keyed out and then expanded. Of course, I reduced the opacity so that way it looks like it's a hologram and that way you, you could see my hand behind it. Should I make this bigger? Oh, there we go. Uh, so that way you could see my hand behind it so it looks like it's sitting in front of me but then it's not completely opaque. It does have some transparency to it. Now, what sells the effect so well or even better is the fact that so you'll see these, let me zoom in a little bit. You'll see these breaks in the footage, like this one, this one, and this one. What I did here was every time my finger was going to touch the screen, it lights up. See that? See that white area right there? And then it goes away. So when I play this, boop, 
so how I did that was I just created a mask for this clip only or these clips only I created a mask in the color page and I just did a circular mask I placed it around where my finger would be and then I just increased the highlights so that way it would be brighter it would be white that's all it is but it creates a pretty cool effect that when my finger touches the hologram boop, it lights up now if you look closely enough obviously I'm not hitting anything of significance like I just hit on the timeline there but then the action that it performed was it it switched to the color page so that doesn't make any sense but it doesn't matter I touched the screen and something happened that's what we're trying to build here the effect that this holographic screen is interactive so that's that and then right underneath that so I touched the screen it turns white and then I added some sound effects to make it boop. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to hear this on OBS, but well, I'll find out later. So not only do you see the white blip, but you hear the beep. And then the more senses that you could appeal to, the more believable it's going to be. Then this is an effect that I am particularly proud of. So watch watch this area of my face my body right as the hologram is going to come out of the phone i'm going to key it one frame i'm sorry i'm going to uh scrub frame by frame so i swipe and then watch you see how my face is getting brighter you see that it's subtle but it looks like that the hologram is emitting enough light and as it expands, it's growing onto my body, my face. So as subtle as that is, it helps sell the effect that, oh wow, this hologram is in fact in front of him because, look at that, it lit up his face. Now how I did that was in the color page, I keyframed this mask, I'll show you this mask. I keyframe this mask to start small right when I'm starting to swipe and then it expands as the hologram opens up. See that? I don't think this will play in real time because I'm recording on OBS and this is a fusion clip so this is pretty taxing on my computer but forgive me. But you could see it as I keyframe it, not keyframe, why well, I keep saying keyframe? As I scrub it frame by frame. And underneath that, I have some more beeps. So that way, as the hologram expands, it lights up my face and then you hear it come out. So those effects all together. So the object tracking of the hologram to the phone right it's matching the very subtle movements of my hand um the beeps of when my finger touches the hologram and then the you know the lit up portions of where on the hologram my fingers touch and then the expanding hologram as it comes out and lighting up my face all those effects all those little things together i think really help sell the effect and that's all it is so it's really not that difficult to build something like this it is a lot of layers to make the effect work and that's what you probably have to spend the most time on just brainstorming how can i make this better but as far as the like the object tracking was probably the most time consuming part just because uh sometimes if you don't select the the correct point uh to be a reference then like the object tracker can miss or like fall off but other than that the second most time consuming part was setup and acting like like where the hell do i touch in the air to make it look like that i'm touching a hologram anyway that's it hope you found this video entertaining helpful if you did subscribe if you haven't done so already i'll see you guys in the next one peace <laughs>